All right, welcome in everybody. Thank you for bearing with me there. It was uh, I didn't plan on going live 10 minutes early, but the stream decided to go ahead and do it anyway. Usually I get to control that. But anyways, here we are, week two, Syracuse and Rutgers. Couple things I want to say, talk about before we get into the game here. Of course, be sure to check all of our stuff out. My name's John Eads. This is my personal YouTube account. You can check all of our stuff out at orangefizz.net. That's Syracuse football, basketball, football recruiting, and basketball recruiting, and everything else, everything in between. You can find there and follow us at on Twitter for that blog. And I like my own, if you will, and kind of went through and updated Syracuse and Ohio and gave them a couple overall out at every position. But these are official, these are from SG1 Sports, the very uh, well known. World. So now all of the rosters are updated. Everyone's got different overalls here. Here is some of the top players. And uh, yeah, so for Syracuse, and here's Rutgers as well. I'll show you those real quick. Be sure to drop a like on this video, sub to the channel, turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a stream, never miss a game. If you love football, it's only 14 content. Sub to my channel. It's the place to be. Appreciate you guys showing out tonight. Here is Rutgers. So everybody's updated. Everyone that's on the team should be on the team. And that's the same for Syracuse. I had a couple hiccups last week with Nikeem Johnson returning punts or whatever. Uh, let me just make sure the depth chart is correct for Syracuse punt return and uh, kick return wise. Then we'll get going, man. I'm excited for this. It's like the Big Ten ACC challenge. It's uh, you know, it's it's a it's a rendition of the old Big East times when Syracuse and Rutgers would play. Here's the updated QB numbers here. So you see, Devito was 85 last week. He's down at 76. So they're not very high on him at SG1 Sports, but that's okay. All right, we're good to go right there. So let's get going. Syracuse and Rutgers, week two. Be sure to drop your score predictions right now. Who's going to win the game? I put out a poll on Orange Fizz, uh, at, at Orange Fizz on Twitter and on a couple Facebook groups as well. So if you saw those, hope you voted for them. I think in real life, or, you know, my, my record prediction, I wrote an article for another site. Uh, I had Syracuse going 5-7 and seven and losing to Rutgers in this game because I think Greg Schiano has done such, such a great job with that program. And they're going to be they're going to become a threat in the Big Ten very soon, if not next year. And I said, as well, we're going to do an orange out because, you know, it's an old rivalry. Playing a team we used to play all the time, so you got to go with the orange out. It's also the home opener, so why not? We're going to go orange here. Make sure they're going white and stuff so we don't have any... Alright, yeah, we can't have that. We can't have them going scarlet. we got to have them... Uh, what can we do with them? Anything cool? Oh, we'll just go... We'll keep it simple with the whites. Easy enough. Alright, I think we're... Pretty much good to go. So uh, let's do it. Of course, the game's going to be hosted at the Carrier Dome, and I think it did get a little bit of a facelift in the college football revamped version of this game. I guess we'll find out. I haven't like opened up or seen what the Carrier Dome has looked like in the new version of this video game, so. We're about to find out right here. We'll take a look at some impact players. You can see Rutgers very good on paper. Um, 88 overall to Syracuse, 81, 84 offense, 90 defense. So really good right there. They've added a lot of transfers over the past couple seasons that make them look, you know, make them a lot better, a lot more competitive. Syracuse's top players, Schmidt, Taj Harris, Michael Jones. And for Rutgers, got a nice strong safety. Couldn't tell you what his name is. The only player I know here is Isaiah Pacheco. He's very good, 86 overall running back. So keep an eye out for him. Let's get into it. All right, so looks like Syracuse won the toss and is going to kick to the Scarlet Knights, and we are underway with game two of the 2021 season. Game number one in the Carrier Dome, the season home opener here. Syracuse and Rutgers. I don't really know what to expect, but we're about to find out. And again, be sure to uh, drop anything 
in the live chat. I'll be keeping up with all of your comments and stuff. Let's have a good time today. Vedros throwing on first down, and it's picked off. Oh, my gosh. One play for Rutgers, and it's already going the other way. Neil Nunn intercepts that pass. Wow. And the Orange defense picks up right where they left off last week with the shutout against Ohio in the 21 to nothing win. And the offense is cooking right here. Great starting field position. Let's see if they can take advantage. On play number one, it's a draw, handoff. It's a two running back set. And Sean Tucker took the carry for three yards. I think Jarvion Howard was in the backfield as well. Hopefully we see more of him this week. It was really all Tucker in terms of running the ball last week, so I'm hoping we kind of mix it up a little more. Here's Taj Harris coming in motion right to left. He takes the jet sweep, but is brought down in the backfield. A strong open field tackle by Avery Young, so third and long situation for the Orange. Oh, yeah, so if Syracuse wins this game in simulation. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean, Geometry Dash. Yeah, I got you. Start off 2-0. This will be the first 2-0 start if Syracuse can win. Only the second time since 2015. The 2018 team, of course, started out 2-0 as well. As DeVito throws right here on third and long and finds a receiver over the middle. That was Damian Alford, who has the wrong number on, I believe. Anyways, uh, a 51-yard field goal here for Schmidt. See if the Orange can capitalize, get some points in the opening drive. It's a long one, but he can, he can hit that. And he does. So Syracuse takes the 3-0 lead. He has still not missed a field goal all season long. So uh, a Neil Nunn interception leads to three points for the Orange. It's looking good so far. Got a lot of comments in the chat here. Justin Time says, Peter, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 65 Pancake says, Rutgers sucks. That's the spirit, baby. Love to hear it. Uh, in real life prediction of Syracuse Rutgers, Rutgers wins 49-21. I don't know if it would be that much of a blowout, but I have Rutgers winning as well, so I'm with you there. Yeah, no, Rutgers is that good. I'm not sure they're good enough to put up 49 points, especially against Syracuse's defense, which should be much better next season. Um, but they're definitely good enough to beat the Orange. But Scarlett Lance coming out in Wildcat here on play number one of the second drive. Pacheco's brought down in the backfield. Mikel Jones back there making the play. He switched from number 13 to 3. So I'm at, clearly I'm going to have to go through and edit these numbers. Uh, but, you know, I can do all that. That's fine. It's just kind of stylistic things. So second and 11. Two plays for Rutgers. One was an interception. The second was a TFL. And Shiano wanted to go Wildcat there, which is kind of interesting. But uh, a lot of running room here on second and long. Pacheco finds 10 yards up the middle on a counter. So third and 1. See if the SUD... See, only one back, uh, one one running back got a tight end. They motion him out. So now four receivers. They're going to pass it here. Vedral throws, and he's got his receiver over the middle. Bo Melton makes the grab. I think he's their highest rated player. The wideout moves the chains for Rutgers. Big gain and more than enough for the first down. From their own 46 yard line. First down. Throwing once again here on first and 10. And he finds a receiver along the near sideline. It's Melton once again. A strike thrown in zone coverage by Vedral. And the Scarlet Knights are over midfield. Putting together a nice drive here on the second one of the game. Let's see if the Orange defense can step up. In this situation, last uh, you know, last week, they were able to force some turnovers, cause some negative plays, and they do just that right there. McKinley Williams gets in the backfield. It brings down Pacheco for a three-yard loss. Puts Rutgers behind the sticks. You need a lot of those. That's a great sign. Now, can we see that consistently? Because we've seen McKinley Williams get stops in the backfield. We've also seen the Syracuse defense get gashed uh, in terms of the run. Check down from Vedral here, and he is bopped along the near sideline by Garrett Williams. First time we're calling his name today. Brings up a third and four situation. No pressure with that three-man front. Yeah, I mean, they were probably sitting back in a zone, but you, you like to see him send some pressure. You know it can get home. So it's third down now, and they're going to need about four. So third and four. See if Rutgers elects to pass or run. They passed on the last one. This is probably another passing situation. Could be a screen. It is a pass. We send a blitz off the edge, and it gets home. Well done. Great call dialed up by Tony White, and it's Neil Nunn making another play. He's got a pick, and that wasn't a sack, but it was a QB pressure, QB hurry, whatever you want to call it, and it brings up a field goal situation for Rutgers. Great stop by the defense. This is a 
46 yarder and it's good so the scarlet knights come back attack on a field goal that evens the score up at three perfect blitz and uh, i picked neil nunn as one of my breakout defensive players of the year and that's certainly looking like a good prediction so far so the kick return here, we got Taj Harris and Abdul Adams as the, the kick returners, one and two. Harris up and over the 25, fighting for extra yardage, and he gets up to around the 30-yard line where Tommy DeVito and the Syracuse offense will take over. We'll see what they can do. Last time they had great starting field position, and kind of like what we saw last year, the drive just stalled. Here's a draw for Tucker, finds a little bit of room along the left side, but he's actually brought down for a loss. So haven't seen... Much impressive play out of the offense just yet, but that was a nice play by that secondary member coming downhill, making that tackle. From their own 28-yard line. It's second I thought DeVito played a really good game last week, but like I said, the overalls, the player ratings were updated with the new uh, new rosters and stuff, so you know that might be a byproduct of why we're seeing a little bit of regression so far offensively as DeVito keeps on a speed option and picks up five. So third and five is the situation. Definitely manageable. We saw a lot of screens last week. We'll see what the Orange elect to do here. So a five wide set. Interesting. So no screen here. Look for Courtney Jackson, 85. He uh, was there in a bubble. They finally tried to force it to him. Nearly intercepted. Should have been intercepted as DeVito forces that one in there. Syracuse will have to punt. So two drives stall. Two three and outs. Nice punt, and a pretty good return by Rutgers there. Isaiah Washington, 14 yards on that one. So the Rutgers offense will come back out. Syracuse defensively, got to make some things happen again. Peter says, I don't really see a huge difference in talent for the two teams, though. Um, yeah, no, Peter, you're correct. I mean, the t Rutgers is slowly starting to recruit at a very high clip. I don't know if you saw yesterday, but they just snagged the number one recruit in the state of New York. He was a four-star. His name's Moses Walker out of Erasmus Hall. Uh, Greg Schiano is really starting to bring some talent to that program. It's not there now, but in the next two to three years, it's going to be there. And they're they're really uh, hitting the transfer portal hard as well, so they're bringing in some talent that way. So Rutgers, you can't sleep on them anymore. You can't just assume they're going to be a two- or three-win team. They're actually going to be a threat in the Big Ten East, I would say. Give it just two or three years there. Nice defensive play by Syracuse. Jihad Carter coming downhill and gathering a TFL. That's well done. He's primed for a big season. So third and 12, third and long. The Syracuse defense has been very impressive so far. Let's see if they can get off the field with another stop. Probably looking at a zone blitz here. Nope, just a three-man rush, but zone coverage behind. Stephon Thompson misses the tackle. But the Orange eventually bring him down. Couldn't tell who that was. Uh, number five with the stop there. Uh, the numbers aren't updated, so I'm not sure really who is who. I'm kind of just having to figure it out on the fly here. But a great stop for the Syracuse defense once again. The Orange will get it back offensively. Fair catch. Call for actually a fake. It's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. So bring it out to the 20 or the 25. One of those two. We'll find out in just a sec. You have Rutgers going 5-7. and seven. That's probably fair with a 3 nose. I don't know their schedule. I don't have it offhand. But I think they're going to compete with Big Ten teams again this year. They almost beat Michigan. They took them to overtime last season as DeVito... Gets sacked on the first play. Yikes, man. This Rutgers defense is absolutely flying around right now. I haven't really seen any positive plays from the Orange offense thus far. And that one wasn't even an offensive line breakdown. It was just a blitz. Second and 16, four wide receiver set. Sweep for Tucker. He breaks the tackle but can't get away from the second guy. Another negative play. Brings up third and a mile. Bring up third and long. Yeah, it looks like Davis got beat off the right side there. So now third and 18, the Orange 0 for 2 on third downs. You bring Elmore in the game at tight end. Got three wide receivers. Yeah, Peter, Rutgers is in the Big Ten. Screen pass, left side for Tucker. Tries to stiff arm out of a tackle, but he can't get away from the second one. And he's brought down for a negative play once again. So fourth and 20. Now the situation for the Orange. 
Before the next drive, I'm going to switch up the offensive line because it's not the starting five left to right as it should be. You got Davis playing right tackle. That's not what it should be. I should have updated that before the game, but I figured the rosters had that already in there, so I'll go fix that before the next offensive series. Illinois always tough against Rutgers, though. Yeah, I mean, Illinois is kind of a pesky team as well in the same way. And so far, it's been totally even. The one conference win is Illinois. Yeah, Illinois is pretty good too, though. But yeah, Rutgers could beat Illinois, I'd say, head-to-head. -head. All right, great starting field position for the Scarlet Knights on this drive, and they get a nice run on first down. Up the middle goes Pacheco. Picks up nine yards. See if the Syracuse defense can hold once again. The offense dealt them really a, just a terrible hand. So they start at the, well, it was at the 32-ish. Here's a screen pass to the near side. That's going backwards. A negative five yardage play. That made no sense. But uh, Stephon Thompson with the TFL brings up third and six. That's a big play, especially if you're trying to hold Rutgers to a field goal here. Yeah, Peter, I have no idea what to expect from the Orange as well, honestly. Could be anywhere between three and nine and seven and five, honestly. So third and six. Vegel dropping back to pass. Screen pass far side, and the Orange sniff it out. Chase Atkinson, I believe, made the TFL over there. 35 in orange. Either way, brings up fourth down and eight. Rutgers going to have to settle for a field goal once again. So it's been a defensive battle so far, a defensive struggle. And the orange defense has certainly kept Syracuse in it thus far. The offense has to get something going. Here's a 48-yard field goal. See if the kicker can nail this one. He's one for one today. And make it two for two. Rutgers takes the six to three lead. But it could be much worse. Could be 14 to three right now. Could be 14 to nothing. I mean, uh, the, the, Neil Nunn, the defense, really set up Syracuse to even have some points because the offense got it in plus territory. Didn't do anything with it except get the field goal. But they got to get something going in the next drive. Here's Taj Harris with some room on the return. Fights through a tackle and is up and over the 30-yard line. Where DeVito and the offense will take over again. They really got to find some answers. Just seen a lot of negative plays, a lot of stalling. And actually, I'm going to, all right, after this play, I'll fix the offensive line. I forgot to do that. It should be, you know, Bergeron right, uh, left tackle. And then Bleich left, uh, left guard. Veterello center. Davis right uh, guard. And then Service right tackle. Here's DeVito on a scramble, though, showing off the mobility. All right, Tommy. Good run right there. See the replay one more time. It was a play action fake. Nobody was open, so he decided to take off. That's the kind of mobility we need to see from Tommy this year. I was watching the Syracuse Clemson game from 2018 or 2017, rather, and, you know, Dungy played such a critical role in that because he was able to get out of the pocket and, and find some room and move the chains with his feet. You know, whether that be Garrett Schrader or Tommy DeVito or Jacoby and Morgan, someone's got to find a way to kind of do that and replicate that because, especially in this offense, you need that to keep drives alive. So, see if I can switch the depth chart right here real quick. Might need to wait one play. Just bear with me here for one second, folks. Left tackle. Oh, no. This looks to be correct. Yeah, okay. So, Davis is the only thing that's wrong. So, service should be right here. I don't see him on there. All right. We'll, we'll see if we can fix that. Uh, the starting four... Everybody but the right tackle is correct, so... Um, Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll do one play, just like we did last week. Just do a handoff, probably. We've got a first and Who says Tommy will be starting this season? No one did. No one did. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a question mark. He's not going to media days, right? So, who knows? Hand it off for Tucker. He gets ahead for two yards. Now we'll switch up the depth chart. Had to play one. Might have to play one more play. Only two I'm going to play, guys. Trust me. All right, let's get service in a right tackle. I'm not sure why he's not on there anyway. Maybe they screwed up and thought he graduated or something. He's coming back for his sixth year. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's playing center. That's the problem. All right, so we got to put Veterello in at center, and then we'll be good. Fun fact, I actually went to the same... Actually, I went to high school with Veterello. We went to the same high school here in uh, Detroit. In service year at right tackle. I did that correctly, right? <sighs> Gosh, should have done this before. Yep, all right, we're good. Let's go. One more play, I think, and then I'll uh, hop off here. All right. 
Might be good, actually. Yeah, we're good. All right, let's go. Six to three. Rutgers has the lead. Two fifty-eight to go in the first quarter. Offensive line is updated, and I'll catch up with your uh, comments in the live chat here in just a sec. Devito speed option gives it for Tucker. Got some room. Brought down after a five-yard gain. So third and three. Yeah, like I was saying, though, no one knows who the starter's going to be. It could be Schrader, could be Lampson, the true freshman, could be Morgan. Could be DeVito, of course. Here's a check down to Adams in the flat. He gets eight yards and moves the sticks with the first down. But DeVito not going to, you know, the media days. There's an article on the site that one of our writers, uh, one of our authors wrote, Jaron May. Him not being there is kind of, uh, you know, kind of interesting. You kind of theorize a couple things but, uh, from that. I don't know. You guys, uh, if you guys have any opinions on that, let me know. DeVito keeps once again. He's really shown off his running ability so far. His fourth take for 25 yards. This has been the best drive that Syracuse has had all day. Let's see if they can finish it with some points. Preferably a touchdown. Let's get to the red zone first, though. Another key for DeVito on the read option. He is absolutely torching the Scarlet Knights defense with his legs as he picks up another nine. And a fresh set of downs. Now the Orange are in the red zone. First time today. They're inside the 20-yard line. Let's see what they can do with it. Coming out with a Wildcat. Interesting. So Adam's going to take the snap. Receiver comes in motion. It's a counter back to the left side. That was a good game. Four yards right there. I'm not really sure if Dual Adams is going to be your, you know, your go-to guy in the Wildcat. I think it'd be Sean Tucker, but I don't know. I like that wrinkle. And they're going to, no, they're not going to stick with it. But Adams is still in the game at tailback. So we'll see. Four receiver set. Passing it here. Pretty good pass protection. Open over the middle. It's Alford, and he's inside the five with a 12-yard catch on the slant route, I believe it was. No replay, so we don't get to take a look. But first and goal from about the three-yard line. The Orange spreading out again. Let's see what they do. is going to hot route a receiver to the right side. It is a pass. He's got a man open on the slant. Will he throw it? He's going to throw it to the corner of the end zone. He's got a receiver, and that's a Syracuse touchdown. Javante Williams on the receiving end of that pass. Now, we're going to have to see the replay. I'm not sure if they're going to review this or not because I think he may have had a foot on the line. But for now, it's a touchdown. The Orange take the 9-6 to lead. And that was a dot by DeVito. Had a great pocket awareness, great patience on that one. Eventually found his man. Puts a nice touch on that. And Syracuse responds and takes the lead. Looks like we won't have a replay on this. No, we won't. So a touchdown for Syracuse. The Orange go up 10 to 6. DeVito to Javante Williams for the touchdown. Beautiful play. Can this defense play any better? I mean, these guys have a great tradition. Live up to the billing. Javante is one of those young studs that should have a bigger role in the receiving game this year, along with, you know, Alford. We've already seen him make some catches. Courtney Jackson. Queeley's going to have an even bigger role this year. He's the number two receiver, just like last year. Here's Vedro keeping on first down. Read option, giving Syracuse the taste of its own medicine. And he picks up 14 yards. Vedrill is a really mobile quarterback, a true dual threat. He comes by way of Nebraska. He transferred and started for the uh, Scarlet Knights last year. Got a whole season under his belt. He looked pretty good. And a Wildcat here from Rutgers. Doesn't really go anywhere. Pacheco picks up nothing. Great job by Syracuse defensively. Marlo Wax with the tackle. Another breakout defensive player of mine. Geometry Dash says Rutgers played the first ever CFB game and lost, so Rutgers technically invented losing. Yeah, that's that's I think that's a factual statement. <laughs> that's funny. Vedral throwing has a receiver open over the middle, and Shameen Jones reels it in. 29-yard pitch and catch for Rutgers. And they've done very a uh, very good job of hitting Syracuse up through the air, especially against the zone coverages and the zone pressures. Kind of gone back and forth. Syracuse has gotten some blitzes home and brought down the quarterback for sacks and TFLs. But at other times, they've had some pretty big plays, especially over the middle. But they've kind of stalled. The drives have stalled in this area. Let's see if Syracuse can do that once again. Looks like a triple option to the left side. And the Orange play that very well. Thompson brings down Vedral for a two-yard loss. His second TFL of the game brings up second and 12. So Wildcat here, but not before the first quarter comes to an end. So 10-6 to 6 
Syracuse on top at the end of one. The most recent play, a DeVito pass to Javante Williams in the corner of the end zone to take the 10-6 lead. It's looked pretty good so far. The defense has done well. We finally saw a good extended drive from the offense. Let's see if they can keep it going. Going to start off with a 2nd and 12 situation. Rucker's going to go empty from the 34. And Vedrill's keeping on a QB draw. The Orange play it well, though. Marlowe Wax brings him down. So 3rd and long. See if Syracuse elects to bring the pressure or sit back in zone. Let's see. Rutgers going to empty it up again. Go five wide. The orange six in the box. Looks like it's zone. And they hit an over route. And that's going to be good for a first down. Bo Melton comes across your screen on an in route. Makes the catch. And gets over the first down marker to move the sticks. Like they dropped into maybe a cover three or a cover four there. Didn't really have any flat defenders or anybody over the middle. Here's a triple option to the right side. Vedro gets the pitch off this time. And the Scarlet Knights pick up five. And this play is number eight on the drive. So two backs in the backfield here. Probably looking at a run. Yep, triple option to the left. We've seen that quite a bit. And a lot of running room along the left side for Pacheco. He picks up seven and gives Rutgers a fresh set of downs. But Vedrill took a hit on that one, and he's injured. So he's going to come out for this play. And we'll see who the new quarterback is. I believe it's Arter Sitkowski who actually transferred out of Rutgers. He's going to come in and toss this one out of bounds. So we'll see if Vedrill comes in after that one play on the sideline. Nope, Sitkowski's going to stay in the game. I'll be sure... To uh, I'll be sure to take him out for Rutgers' next drive. He shouldn't be in there. He's transferred, playing somewhere else. I forget where, but hands off on a counter. And Pacheco's brought down. Mikel Jones in the backfield, along with Jason Simmons Jr. Okay, so there it is. We've figured out, we've solved the mystery for who number five is on the Syracuse defense. It's the New Mexico State transfer, Jason Simmons Jr., who transferred in earlier this spring, I think in March. And he's going to play rover, safety, kind of the hybrid role in the 3-3-5. He makes a nice play. He's made a couple plays today. And the Orange get in the backfield on third down for a sack. Kingsley Jonathan gets in there and brings down Sitkowski. So Rutgers, for the third time today, going to have to settle for a field goal. And if you're the Orange, if you can hold everybody you play this year to field goals, and, you know, we don't know what we're going to get from the offense, but if you can hold teams to field goals and not give up touchdowns, Time and time again, you're going to keep yourself in every single game. They're doing that right here, and they're giving themselves a chance to win the game, in fact. 48 days till uh, Rutgers kicks off against Temple. It's getting closer and closer, man. I'm excited for it as Rutgers knocks home another field goal. So 10-9 your score. With about 8 and change to go in the second quarter. We'll see. The offense has been moving the ball. The defense has been playing well. I don't really know if this is going to end up high scoring or... Kind of just, uh, you know, low hanging around. Harris going to kneel it for a touchback here. We take a look at the stats so far. So 18 plays for Syracuse versus 25 for Rutgers. 113 total yards for the Scarlet Knights. The 69 for the Orange. And, you know, Rutgers has had a couple of nice extended drives where they've been able to move the ball, pick up first downs. The Orange really, the last one, the touchdown drive they just had was their best of the game. Let's see if they can replicate that right here. A five wide set on first down. DeVito just gets it away before the blitz gets home. Luckily, falls incomplete. So brings up second and ten. No harm, no foul. Looks like we got two tight ends for this set. Two wide receivers to the near side. DeVito's going to keep it on a read option. Really, I uh, have never seen DeVito run this much. He's got a ton of room. He crosses midfield. He breaks a tackle. Tommy DeVito is still going. And he's finally brought down at the 31-yard line. Oh, my gosh. Would you believe me if I would have told you that Tommy DeVito would have triple the amount of running yards that he did passing yards against Rutgers? That's unbelievable. I hope Sterling Gilbert's watching this. You got to get your boy out in space with the options. Clearly. If it's not DeVito, it's got to be Schrader. Four wide receivers set. Three to the far side. One to the near side. Hot route for DeVito. It's another pass. And he hits Jackson. I think that's who he put on the hot route as well. I think he told him, you know. Running out that time instead of whatever he was going to run. And Jackson gets his first catch of the day. Picks up nine yards. So second and one, Chris Elmore in at uh, tight end on the right side of that line over there. And a run play for the Orange. Sean Tucker finds a hole and bursts forward for a seven-yard gain. So Syracuse back in the red zone for the second time in a row. Let's see if they can score a touchdown for the second time in a row. Three wide receivers, one tight end. 
Tucker in the backfield. Alford comes in motion. Triple option left side. DeVito going to keep it. Not much room there. He breaks a tackle, and he's going. Is he going to hit the pylon? Are you kidding me? Tommy DeVito with the legs, baby. Oh, my goodness. What are we watching right now, folks? What are we watching? How did he do that? How did he do that? Man, I think we figured out what's wrong with Syracuse. I think we solved what the problem is. DeVito needs to run the football. I, I don't know. That was great. That was great. How about that? So two straight drives and two straight touchdowns for the Orange. And just like that, they're leading in yardage. Tied for first downs now, and they're doing it in less plays. It's been uh, as good of a start as you could ask for, really. Now if you just clean up a couple of the mistakes, don't turn the ball over, you'll be just fine. Texan Mark says, NJ represent. What's up? We're all New York in this one, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice run on first down from Aaron Young. He picks up nine yards. Rutgers has had some success running the football. It's second down now, and they're just a few feet away from that first down marker. Three wide receivers set, one tight end. It's a pass on second and one. Pressure nearly gets home. Vedral finds a receiver against the zone coverage. Williams brings him down near midfield. It's Melton again. He is absolutely cooking so far. His sixth catch of the game for 62 yards already. If you're watching film on this team, if you're preparing for this team, this is the guy you need to look out for. Play action on first down, and Joshua Youngblood, the transfer from Kansas State, gets his second catch of the game. Pretty tight coverage there. I'm surprised he reeled that one in. Youngblood, one of the coolest names in college football, I would say, too. All right, Sikowski still in the game. We need to get Sikowski out of the game. This is my fault, guys. But Crookshank makes the catch along the far sideline. The Wisconsin transfer getting another year. At the end of this drive, I'll take Sikowski out. He's going to keep it on a QB draw. Jones stacks him up along with Adrian Cole. He's brought down for no gain. So second and ten. Again, right here is, wh is where the Rutgers drives have been stalling so far in this game. Let's see if that happens again. Scarlet Knight's going to empty it up to try and counter that. Another draw for Sikowski. He dives forward. And picks up two. So third and seven. Probably a passing situation. You expect a screen, maybe a draw. The only kind of run this would be would be a draw. But odds are it's going to be a pass. So let's see. The orange goes zone. They send some pressure. Doesn't get there. Wide open up the seam is Shameen Jones. And he's going to trot into the end zone for a touchdown. Sidkowski delivers a dot. That man was wide open up the seam, though. Rucker strikes back. It's now 15-17 ball game. Let's see if Shiano wants to take the one or go for two here. It's going to go for two, it looks like. All right, here we go. So Rucker's getting aggressive early on, trying to knock this ball game up. See if the orange defense can hold strong. It's a read option. Yes, they do. Great job. Marlo Wax gets in the backfield and brings down Sikowski. So Syracuse retains its lead. It looks like we're going to have a high-scoring affair in the carry on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Nice kickoff here, and Abdul Adams will kneel it for a touchback. Syracuse will come out with the offense, see if they can stay hot. Last two drives have resulted in touchdowns, and DeVito's really picked up his level of play. Let's see if that continues right here. Handoff on first down to Tucker, trying to bounce it outside. He's brought down, no gain on that one. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 25-yard line. Syracuse. Again, be sure to like the vid, sub to the channel, check out all of our content at orangefizz.net and at orangefizz on Twitter. Here's DeVito throwing. Jackson breaks a tackle, and he gets up near the first down marker. So third and one, making a lot out of a little there. And a great job from DeVito facing down that blitz, getting the throw off, finding his receiver. And it gives the Orange a chance to convert this first down. 
I think they're one for three today on third downs. We'll find out in a sec. They should show a graphic. One for four. Okay. Here we go. So third and one. And they're going to go empty. I, this better not be a QB draw. That's If they're going to run it, that's what it's going to be. Or it could be... Okay. I've seen this play as well. Motion. Read option. But I don't like the play call there. Alford brought down for a two-yard loss. Why not just hand it off to Sean Tucker or go Wildcat with Adams again? I don't know. Like, yeah, Michael, exactly. Do the option. Do something other than that. I mean, that was an option technically, but why are you getting fancy with it? It's third and one. Honestly, you can go Chris Elmore. Just hand it off to Chris Elmore. That's all you got to do there. So instead, Syracuse will punt it, and that's just kind of been the frustrating thing the past couple of years, the inconsistent play calling. Some of the plays that Sterling Gilbert and Dino Babers call, you, it just don't make sense sometimes. That's one of them right there. The virtual Gilbert and Babers make a bad call. But the Syracuse defense back up. They've been good. They gave up a touchdown last time out. Let's see if they can improve here. Not on this play, though. Aaron Young finds a lot of running room, picks up 10 on the split zone. So second and inches. And Rutgers is going to empty it up, too. What are, what, what are these guys doing, bro? It's short yardage. Why are you going five wide? I mean, it works out that time, but you're kind of overcomplicating it. I don't know. That's just my opinion. They move the chains nonetheless, though. Youngblood with his third catch of the day moves the sticks. Yeah, I'd say Rutgers is wearing him down a little bit, but, you know, the offense isn't really giving the defense a lot of time to chill, right? That's not, you know, it's kind of an excuse, but uh, defensively you got to get some things figured out as well. Jones beats the man-to-man -man coverage, picks up 10. It looks like he's injured, shaking up a little bit. From the 23-yard line, first down. So looks like the Scarlet Knights are putting a nice drive together here. Sitkowski hands off Pacheco, bursting through a hole, runs over Jihad Carter, and he's all the way down to the six-yard line. You see it one more time. The offensive line's getting excellent push, and Pacheco runs tough, man. Got to keep Rutgers out of the end zone here. Got to find a way to get a red zone stop. Four wide receivers set on first down. There's only five players in the box. Sitkowski keeps on a read option, and he's brought down by Cole. At about the two-yard line, so second and goal. See if Syracuse can work some magic here. Got to stack that box. Looks like they're going to blitz right here. They do. Oh, and it gets there. Let's go, Syracuse. I think Adrian Cole. Yeah, it was Adrian Cole getting there. His Already his sixth tackle of the game. Definitely leading the defense right now. So third and goal from the two-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see if they can stack it up. It's a run play inside, and Young gets there, fights through the Mikel Jones tackle, and Rutgers gets the go-ahead touchdown. They lead 21-17 to with under three minutes to go in the first half. Man, so it started off good for the Orange defense. Got a couple stops, forced a couple of field goals, but like uh, Michael was saying, you know, starting to get worn down a little bit. Especially on the run game. And it looks like they're ready for the kickoff. Excellent kick. Let's see if Syracuse can come back and score some points. This could be the last drive of the half. They got all three timeouts. Momentum swings have been fairly even. And with so little separation, this game can be drastically changed on... Coming out with a three wide receiver set in the gun. DeVito's going to throw. It's a fake screen wheel going up the near sideline, and it's intercepted. Oh, my gosh. He threw it into triple coverage. Just straight up threw it into triple coverage. And that's a play that Babers and Syracuse have repped for years and years. That fake screen wheel to the tight end did not work that time. Renee jumped in front of it and reeled it in. So Tommy DeVito throws his first pick of the day. He had two last week as well. The over-under was set at six for the season. I took the over. Already halfway there. Not a good one. You can't force that into double coverage, triple coverage, especially with the safety over top. So here's Rutgers. They got a chance to blow this thing open, but Kingsley Jonathan makes a nice tackle in the open field. I got to take Sikowski out of the game. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to do that. I don't know if it would make a difference, honestly, because the plays that he's made, anybody could have made, but... Let me get him out. We'll put... Um, uh, Vedral must be out for the game because he has not come back in. So, 
We'll put uh, Johnny Langan in for Sitkowski. All right, I'm going to sim this play so I don't, you know, get one off there. Uh, Sikowski rushes for five yards. Now we'll get him out. So third and four. Let's get Johnny Langan in the game. He's the backup for the Scarlet Knights because Sikowski's in the transfer portal. He's not actually on their team anymore. All right. Should be the last time we got to do something like this. All right. All right, we're going to sim this one, too. I don't want to play it. Oh, my gosh. The first play for Johnny Langan is a pass that gets intercepted by Deuce Chestnut, the true freshman. Second week in a row, he gets a pick. I wish we could have seen it, seen the replay. Maybe at the end of the game, I could find it for you guys. There's, yeah, I'll be able to find it for you, for sure. Uh, here's Anthony Queeley taking a pass from DeVito for 20 yards, just like that. The momentum has flipped back into Syracuse's favor. Let's see if the Orange can score. First time we're calling Queeley's name today. From the 39-yard line. Yeah, I got to keep their time. Got to got to take their time and keep the defense off the field. I agree with you, Michael. Hopefully a long drive right here will do that as Tucker finds some room. He fumbles though, and it's going back to Rutgers. This could be a scoop and score. There's nobody back there. Courtney Jackson looks like he can run him down. He breaks his tackle. Queeley tackles him, but he falls into the end zone. Oh, my gosh. A Sean Tucker fumble goes back the other way for six. This defensive end turns on the Jets, breaks a couple of, field goal, breaks a couple of tackles, and gets in for the touchdown. And the Scarlet Knights take a two-possession lead just like that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's, what, the second turnover of the day from Syracuse? You're not going to... I don't think Sean Tucker fumbled many times last year, if at all. That doesn't happen very often. And unfortunately, the one time it does happen... <laughs> unfortunately, the one time it does happen, it goes back for a touchdown. Michael says, are you sure this is not a replay of 2020? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, they, they won the season opener, so... No, I guess. Hasn't looked very good. I know it's a all right, got to respond. Here's DeVito throwing a deep bomb. That one is nearly intercepted. Syracuse has to take a step back right here and realize that they're still in this game. You can go to, you can go to halftime down 12. That's fine. You get the ball to start the second half. You can't be throwing another pick and turning the ball over again here if you're DeVito as he comes back and makes a nice pass, finds a Ronde Gadsden, probably butchered that name, the true freshman wide receiver out of the state of Florida makes a nice catch his first of the season let's see if that can spark a drive here he's the son of a former NFL player a Super Bowl champ as well there's articles on our site for that stuff I wrote an article specifically on Gazdin going over his high school film and what he could do for Syracuse DeVito throws finds Javante Williams for the second time today Along the far sideline, he has Syracuse's lone touchdown. No, no. One of Syracuse's touchdowns today. The only passing touchdown of the day. And it looks like Shiano's going to challenge this catch. I think he got the foot down. Yeah, definitely. He got the right foot down right there. So this will stand. He has been purchased. <laughs> this one should stand. Should stay second and three. It does. So Rutgers loses a timeout for doing that. Dumb call, Greg. What are you doing, man? So second and three with a minute and 21 to go in the second uh, for second quarter. Excuse me. DeVito hot routes. Throws up the sideline. Queeley's open. Makes the catch. Breaks a tackle. Has a blocker. He's inside the 10 and all the way down to the four. Anthony Queeley, 44 yards on that reception. And Syracuse is in business all the way down at the five with a chance to get back in this game. DeVito gives for Tucker. Has a hold. What a freaking block. Are you kidding me with that? Let's go. Let's go. Tucker gets in there, a five-yard run. I, I, let's see who got that pancake. That was unbelievable. I think it was Tisdale, or it might have been Bergeron. I, odds are it was Bergeron, because Tisdale's a backup. That had to be Bergeron. Let's go, man. The Canadian paving the way for Tucker. And the Maryland native gets into the end zone to pull Syracuse back within five with a minute and nine to go in the first half. 
Yeah, Michael, run clock. You know what? I'll take the score. I'll take the score. We'll see what happens right here. Rutgers only has two timeouts. We'll see what happens. If I'm Syracuse, I'm playing deep zone. I'm keeping everything in front of me. Screen pass on the first play. Pacheco has a lot of room along the left sideline. Oh, my gosh, fellas. You had to see it coming. 22-yard reception on the screen for Pacheco. And just like that, Rutgers has a response drive ready to go. Just one play into it. That can't happen. Simply cannot happen. First down. <sighs> Alright, clock continues to run. Five wide set. Langan's going to throw. He's got all day. Not all day. He's getting brought down. Looked like Syracuse set a blitz. Kingsley Jonathan gets off the edge and brings down Langan for the sack. Second and long. His second TFL of the day. Langan dropping back again. He's going to take off. Couple Syracuse defenders waiting for him. He breaks a tackle and picks up a good chunk of yardage there. There were three or four Syracuse defenders just staring him down, and they let him go. But third and four, still a chance to get off the field. It's going to be a pass. He's throwing up the sideline, and it's broken up. Great play defensively. I didn't see who it was back there. It was 11. I think it was Jihad Carter. I believe it was Carter making that play. False and complete, stops the clock, and the Orange stand up, make a big play. As Rutgers will punt it, fair catch called for, but it's going to bounce into the end zone. So 22 seconds here. You got two timeouts. I think you try and get some points. Maybe you steal a field goal right here. May as well. Let's find out if the defense has made any adjustments after giving up a touchdown on that last drive. This quarterback right now is in a rhythm. They're actually going to go conservative clock and just run this thing. Hey, Tucker's got a nice... Nice hole here, but looks like they're just going to go into halftime, play this one conservative. So it looks like it'll be 29-24 to 24 going into the half. We'll get a picture of the score here. All right, so 29-24 at half. I think the second quarter ended up being pretty good for the Orange. And uh, they're still in this game. They're still in it. The, the run game's been good. The pass game has picked up a little bit. What do you guys think? How's this game going to end up? Syracuse pulling this thing out, or is Rutgers going to win? Let me know. I'm going to post these. Pictures real quick. On that first half. You know who I feel sorry for in that first half? Who? The poor production assistant on SportsCenter. He's going to try to sift through all of those highlights and come out with the ones he's going to choose to try to make the Sports Center top 10. Da -da -da, da -da -da. No, there that, there's definitely a, a lot to choose from, but that's what you like as a fan. I, I think the fans, they like that and enjoy that more than they like seeing great defense. They like seeing guys go up and make huge one-handed stabs and guys make big long diving touchdown runs and they like all that so they're like watching guys hurdle over guys you see it all the time so I think the kids know that too and they're trying to do their best to always you know make a huge play make a big explosive play and put a little cherry on top of that play so that they can be uh, maybe on one of those ESPN top plays just about time to start the second half what, what do you think Herb Street's first point of analysis will be uh, I don't know, something to do with quarterback play, I'm sure. I mean, we always got to hear that stuff all the time. It's all about the quarterbacks. Brad and Kirk ready for the second half. All right, time for the second half. Let's get it. Again, be sure to like, sub to the channel. I'd appreciate all that. Let's see if Syracuse can uh, pull this thing out. Down five, they get the ball to start the second half. And they're going to return it on the first play. Taj Harris gets a couple blocks up the near sideline. And he's up and over the 35-yard line. An explosive 38-yard return from Taj Harris. Now let's see what DeVito can do. Going to roll out left on the first. Good protection. Gets it away and finds a receiver. But it's dropped. Couldn't tell who that was. I think it was Courtney Jackson who dropped that pass. It's second and ten, falls incomplete. Texan Mark says, Q's 48, Rutgers 46. <laughs> really high-scoring game, Mark. I'm really surprised it's been this high-scoring, honestly, as Tucker gets a, a one-yard gain right here on the run. A, a really um, higher scoring than I thought it would be, but you know what? Um, that's what happens when you, uh, you get a couple defensive 
uh, one defensive touchdown, you turn the ball over a lot. It's kind of sloppy so far. It's early on in the season, got to remember that. And that was sloppy right there as DeVito's brought down for a seven-yard loss on third and long. So that brings up fourth and a mile. Looks like Service got beat off the right edge. Yes, he did. So the Orange are going to have to punt this one back. Almost picked. Yep. Yeah, no. Uh, DeVito's had a couple of questionable decisions today. Probably should have two or three picks. Geometry Dash says, Rutgers 41, Syracuse 29. Well, I'm not really sure how that's possible. I mean, I guess if Syracuse gets a field goal and a safety, but interesting score prediction. <laughs> Thank you for participating, though. I do appreciate it. Washington with a 10-yard return. So Rutgers going to have some spectacular starting field position on their first drive of the second half. Tommy not noticing GP. First play is a pass complete to the far side, the young blood. 11 yards on the drag, I believe it was. His fourth catch of the game. <sighs> Johnny Lang has come in and done a pretty good job aside from that pick, which we didn't even get to see. He's done a pretty good job. Looks like they're going to go Wildcat right here. Pacheco's going to keep it, but he can't get away from Jones. He gets a TFL, wraps up Pacheco in the backfield, his second tackle for loss of the ball game. He's played well early on in the season, and we expect a big season from Jones. He's an 85 overall player, I believe. Tommy, Tommy not noticing pr uh, pressure. Okay, yeah, no, definitely not. And, you know, in his defense, the offensive line hasn't given him a ton of time today, but they've been good enough. So it kind of falls on his shoulders a little bit as well. Jones comes right back and breaks down Pacheco for no gain. So third and long. Let's see if the Q's defense can get another stop right here. Two running backs set for the Scarlet Knights. Three wide receivers out. Pressure nearly gets home. He hits Pacheco on a cutback route, and he gets ahead for five yards. That puts him in field goal range, but it brings up fourth down. So a 48-yard field goal once again. He's already hit from here today. As long as 48, he's three for three, this kicker. Looks like it'll be four for four. Yes, it is. So Rutgers tacks on. They now have an eight-point lead. It's 32-24. to 24. The D does look fresh right now. The D has looked good. In spurts. Good enough to win the game, I would say. Uh, you take seven points off the board for that one defensive touchdown, right? So, so an eight-point deficit for the Cuse. Got to score some points on this drive here. The offensive line's been pretty good, I would say. In term, last week they gave up five sacks, I think it was. So this week only two so far. If they can keep that up, that's definitely some improvement right there. Let's see if they can do just that. Play action on first down. Max protection for DeVito, but he just chucks it out of bounds. Maybe a little premature with that decision. He had time to go through his reads there. Drive needs to be seven minutes long. Yeah, I mean, Syracuse doesn't really have seven-minute long drives, though. You know what I mean? Like, aside from all the, you know, Orange is the new fast stuff, here's Tucker with a big gainer. 23 yards. Biggest run of the day for Sean Tucker. They don't really go slow and methodical. You know what I mean? Um, but a nice long extended drive, maybe three or four minutes here would be good, I think, for the defense to chill, get some get some rest, get their stamina back up. That was a nice run right there. Tucker is just built on what he did as a freshman so far this year. He's going to get it again here, and he fights through a tackle, picks up five more. A lot better. The run game today has been a lot better for Syracuse. Last week, they didn't really do much on the ground, but DeVito, Tucker, between the two of them, put up a ton of yardage today, 141 through there you're sick of hearing orange is the new fast yeah honestly bro i didn't really uh think syracuse went that fast last year like i said here's a nice pass to quealy i was watching that syracuse clemson game they were going light speed i didn't really see that last year i don't know maybe i saw it differently than or i'm remembering it wrong but they weren't really going that fast and i kind of like a little bit slower pace not too slow but a little bit slower i still like up tempo but Here's Adams, nine yards on the carry, his best play of the day, only his second touch, the redshirt senior coming back from opting out of the 2020 season. Tucker's the GOAT, LOL, says Ian. Darn right, man. Five wide set on second and one, have not liked this all day. They're going to go play action. DeVito has all day to throw, and he finds a receiver inside the 10. That is Alford once again making the grab, his third of the day. It's been really, uh, it's been contributions by committee from the Syracuse wideout core today. Great protection from the O-line on that one, too. DeVito had all day. He could have pulled up 
uh, a Mark Twain novel back there with all the time he had. Gilbert will adjust his tempo this year to win games. I hope so. I hope so. Just do what you need to do to win some games, man. Honestly, you got to keep your job. Here's Tucker getting stacked up in the backfield. Rutgers knew that one was coming. Brings up second and goal from the eight-yard line, I believe. Yeah, they just sent the blitz. That's just a good call. Can't do nothing about that. Got to punch this in for six, though. And then I'm not sure if you go for one or two, but let's get the six first. DeVito's throwing a quick one, a bubble screen to Jackson near side, but he's brought down. Looks like a lapse in the blocking there. So third and goal. In all fairness, key contributors opted out last year. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I don't know if having Jarvion Howard and Abdul Adams would have made a difference for Syracuse, but it couldn't have hurt, right? Here's a draw for Tucker. He's stacked up on third down, so Syracuse stalls in the red zone for the first time today. It looks like we're going to get a false start as well. Just... That's not good. That's not good. Really won't make a difference because Schmidt's a great kicker, but can't be uh, can't be just taking penalties for no reason. But if he hits this, it'll be back to a five-point game. And it's right down Main Street. So there you go, 32 to 27. Now your score. So Syracuse strikes back. Tacks on the three that it matches the three that Rutgers just scored on their first drive of the second half. So now it's a five-point ball game. You need your defense to step up, get a stop, get a turnover, do something, give yourself a chance to take the lead. As we take a look at some of DeVito's highlights from today, that run right there was spectacular. That was Syracuse's second touchdown of the game back in the first half. Here's Sikowski finding an open receiver. And that was a go-ahead touchdown for Rutgers back in the first half as well. And again, Sikowski's not actually on the Scarlet Knights roster. So he's not in the game anymore. Johnny Langan is. He's going to be their backup. Plus, OL injuries killed us. Had no chemistry. Another good point. You know what? I just, I, I'm kind of just past last season. I don't really even want to think about it that much. I'm really just buying in to 2021 and looking forward to that one there were a lot of things wrong with last year there was covid there was no spring practice you know it just was not a normal year okay so i don't really put a ton of stock into last season i'm just excited for 21 having a normal year once again or as normal as it you know as it could be you know what i'm saying here's langan throwing over the middle complete to crookshank and he picks up eight and moves the chains for the first down Langan's kind of known as Rutgers' wildcat quarterback. You don't really see him pass the ball. He'll usually come in inside the five and goal line situations and try to run it in for a touchdown. He's going to throw it across his body here. That one's out of bounds. Great coverage from the Syracuse secondary. Didn't really get a lot of pressure up front. But it brings up second and ten. The team really needs to make a big impression. Yes, they do. And this game against Rutgers is going to be a great opportunity to make a good impression because this is a great Scarlet Knights team as Pacheco is just bulldozing Syracuse defenders over. He picks up 10. You're not going to prove anything by beating Ohio. I'm sorry, especially now that Frank Solich, the, the head coach, just retired after all the years that he was in there and he was in uh, you know the realm of coaching in college football. This Rutgers game is going to be your chance to prove how good you are. And a nice tackle right there by Jason Simmons. The New Mexico State transfer makes another big, another big play. Fifth tackle of the game. Second TFL brings up fourth down. The Syracuse defense holds strong and gets a stop. This is your chance to prove to the country, prove to the ACC, prove to Syracuse Nation that you deserve respect and you're coming back with bad intentions in 2021. Now let's see if they can virtually get that done. As Taj Harris returns 12 yards, gets up near the 30-yard line. DeVito and the offense will come back out looking to take the lead with a touchdown. Still plenty of time to keep running their offense as usual here. I don't think they need to feel any anxiety about trailing. Four wide out set. Looks like Adams is... The, no, it's Tucker in the backfield. DeVito on a draw gets hung up at the line and he's brought down for no yardage. I'm not against that play, but... I don't know. I'm not really a big Tommy DeVito designed QB draw guy. He has looked good running the ball today, but... I think he's, you know, there's more opportunities for him in kind of the, uh, you know, freelancing offensively. Queely's brought down for a three-yard loss on the jet sweep. That's just a nice play by the Rutgers defensive end. Bergeron got beat there off the left side. Would have liked to see him cut that maybe underneath. But third and 13, Syracuse one for seven on third downs. Haven't been very good today. Let's see if they can convert right here, though. 
going to be a pass. Pretty good. Oh, great protection. Got a bunch of cut blocks there, but DeVito still hunts in to the pressure. He had plenty of time to make a throw there and still ends up getting sacked. So brings up fourth and 20. Look at it. This man is on the ground. You got a wide open receiver right there in Alford. Make the throw, Tommy. Man. Fourth and long here after the sack. Washington. Ian says he can't wait for the new college football game. Me too, man. I mean, this is kind of is the new one for now until we get the other. Uh, what is that punt? The 2023 version? That was a terrible punt. Um, but, yeah, I'm liking this, uh, the revamped, college football revamped version of this game. It's uh, It's been nice. All right, defense back up. Great starting field position for Rutgers. Up at our 41-yard line. Langan's going to pass on first down. Fires deep, and he has a receiver. It's Melton all the way down to the three-yard line. The Scarlet Knights expose the zone coverage once again, and Langan with an absolute dot to Melton. He's up and over the century mark today. His eighth catch, and Cole saves a touchdown. He'll bring it up first and goal inside the five. Oh, man. We've already seen this situation once before. Rutgers won it the first time. Nice tackle, though. Maybe the Orange can get the stop this time. Curtis Harper comes in off the bench and makes the tackle for loss. So second and goal from the three. You got to stack the box. You got to sell out for the run, I think, here. Need a turnover. Yeah, maybe. If anything, though, you're probably going to need to hold them to a field goal here. Pacheco runs again, and Marlo Wax steps up and stacks him up. So third and goal. Looks like, I think he's from, I think he's, down to the two. Yeah, yeah. So they're at about the two-yard line. Too excited to even speak right now. Wing formation for the Scarlet Knights. Can Syracuse get the stop? No, they can't. What were they doing, though? There was nobody in the second level of that defense. There were no linebackers in that formation. An easy run for uh, for the Scarlet Knights. That's, uh, that's bad. Rutgers ready to kick this one off. All right, before the next offensive series, I'm going to switch out Syracuse's punter because he's not playing well at all, and I think I know why. I think we got the wrong guy in at punter. I think that's the problem. <sighs> all right, so the Orange are down 12. So watch this play. Can I make the change right now? Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Might have to do one play. <sighs> Defense starting to get torched, guys. Yeah, Abdul Adams is taking the punts. That's incorrect on so many levels. All right, we'll put Schmidt back there. It looks like they don't have an actual punter in there. <laughs> that would explain a lot. That would explain a lot. <sighs> All right, let me get myself out of here. Might have to do one play again. Maybe we can score a touchdown. Who knows? All right, let's do it. One more play. There's got to be some sense of urgency to this offense right now. They don't have the luxury of wasting drive. All right, blitz from the left side, the clearly. The field with five wide. So we're going to be going to the right side of the field here. Got it. Oh, shit, that was, that was supposed to go to Alford. Ended up falling into Taj Harris's hands. Yeah, James Williams is our punter in real life. I'm not really sure why he's not showing up on the rosters. I had him in there last week in mind. So, again, I got to do a little more fine-tuning with these new ones. Um, but I'll take care of that for next game. But anyways, let's get back to it here. DeVito finds Alford this time for 20 yards. Syracuse over midfield into plus territory. You can't settle for a field goal on this one. You need a touchdown. That's how you're going to get back in this game. you got to keep pace with the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, Williams is our punter for this year. He had a great game last week against Ohio. I'll be sure to have him in uh, in the next game. <laughs> All right, two back set. Looks like a belly play. Adams burst forward, picks up five. And it looks like he's injured. Oh, that's not a good sign. Hopefully he's okay. Luckily, Syracuse is really deep at the running back spot this year with Adams, Howard, Josh Huff, Cooper Lutz, Sean Tucker, of course. 
All right, Motion Jackson into the backfield, actually. Probably a triple option. Yes, it is. Give it to him. Give it to him. Go, Jackson. Go, go, go. Let's go. Gets over the 30-yard line, picks up the first down. Again, need a touchdown on this drive if you want to stay in it. Maybe Williams got caught drinking at Fagan's. Yeah, uh, we'll go with that. Williams was suspended for this week because he was drinking at Fagan's. Thank you, Texan Mark. <laughs> DeVito going up top. And it's picked off again. The second pick he's thrown today, I believe, or is it his third? I think it's his second. What a play in the, in the back of the end zone by Avery there. So now Rutgers will take over. I love the aggressive uh, move there from DeVito to throw it up in one-on-one -on -one coverage. You just hope your receiver can make the play on that. He did not. But Syracuse comes back. Jones with a pass break up there. Brings up second and ten. Same thing again. Needed to stop defensively. Got to score offensively. Our defense will be better. Our offense will be much better. Agreed. Agreed. 65 pancakes. Agreed. Uh, Langan throwing, and he fits it into that tight window to Youngblood. That was a dime. That was a dime. This game is realistic. Yes, it is, man. We try to keep it as realistic as possible, and Tommy DeVito's bad decision-making is coming to fruition here virtually. Langan throwing again. Check down to Melton. Oh, my gosh. He absolutely just tossed. I think that was none. And he's brought down after an eight-yard game. This guy's an animal. I think he's a former four-star wide receiver recruit. Certainly has looked the part. Second and two. Looks like Abdul Adams is going to be out for the rest of the game with an injury. Back spasms, it says. Nice tackle in the open field by Simmons. This guy has looked really good. Get to know this name. Jason Simmons Jr. Again, the transfer from New Mexico State. Going to be playing Rover in the Syracuse defense. Can Syracuse stack up the run? Looks like it's going to be a pass. He just hot routed. Yep, play action. Finds a receiver over the middle, but he's brought down short of the line. He, what? What? It's a zero-yard reception. It was third and one, and they still gave him the first down. What in the world, man? Oh, that's so annoying. Langan throwing it up. Pick that off. Pick that off. Ah, good coverage, though. Garrett Williams that time. In coverage, breaks that pass up. See if he can make a game-changing play. Michael says, my gut tells me DeVito is not our starter. I don't know. It really is an unknown at this point. He might get the benefit of the doubt because he's an upperclassman. He's been in the system for a long time. You know, he kind of is Babers' guy, if you will. We'll see, though. Hasn't really looked like a starting quarterback today at times. He's just been too inconsistent. That's the big thing. At times he does, and at others he doesn't. So... Third and seven, need a stop. Last play of the third quarter. Can Syracuse get it? Get the pressure, get the pressure. Yes! All right, pressure almost got home, but good coverage. And the back end, we're going to the fourth quarter. Syracuse trailing by 12. They got the defensive stop right there. Now they need to score some points. Into the fourth quarter now, and we're back to the action. Harris, the return man. So here's the punt from the Scarlet Knights. Sorry, I'm just going to tweet out this uh, score update real quick. My computer will stop. Uh, Harris breaks the tackle, moves up the right sideline. Their last drive ended with an interception. We're about to find out what the defense can do this time. This quarterback can make good passes. He just needs to focus on... Can Syracuse score some points, get themselves back in the ball game? Let's see. First play is a handoff for Cooper Lutz. He finds some room, picks up 11 yards on the ground. We've got a first and 10. Ball on the 34-yard line. DeVito going to throw on first down, and he's getting sacked. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see the replay. All right, so this time it looks like it was Tisdale getting burned. He loses his one-on-one. -on -one. DeVito's brought down in the backfield, and Syracuse is now way behind schedule. Second and 19 from the 25 It's now the situation. 
All right, Alford comes in motion. Triple option to the right side. Pitch it. All right, or keep it. DeVito gets three there. So third and 16. And Syracuse has not been good in the third down situations today. What are they going to do? Four wide. No, three wide outs. Elmore in the game is a tight end. Maybe a screen. Nope. It's a straight pass. DeVito throws on the run right into the dirt. So fourth and 16. Nothing on that drive. Syracuse going to punt it back. It's not looking too good here, folks. Not looking too good. So Schmidt's in the game to kick now, so it should be some better punting. That one's a beauty. Oh, my gosh, he killed that. Gunner gets down there. It looks like Atkinson or Alford, whichever of the two. I think it was Alford. He brings down Washington after a 10-yard return. Fans calling for Schrader. As the season goes on, guys, if DeVito continues to look bad, and I'm not going to do it this late in the game, but if he's throwing picks early in a game and you guys want me to put in Schrader or Morgan or Lampson, I will do that, okay? But it's going to kind of be like, it has to be at a realistic time. They're not going to do it with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter this early in the season, you know what I'm saying? But if he's out there and he's making bad reads in the first quarter against, like, Hugh Albany, I'll put Schrader in. Just tell me to do it, and I'll do it. Here's Langan throwing on second and five. Finds his tight end for a 31-yard pitch and catch. If Rutgers gets a touchdown here, I think this one's just about over. But if you're Syracuse, you've got to hold them to a field goal. They're not into field goal range yet, though, I would say. Oh, no, they definitely are. Put him in now? I don't know. It's just... It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't seem like a realistic move to me. He's looked pretty good today at times. So I think we're going to roll with DeVito for the rest of this game. I'm not sure it's going to matter because Rutgers is absolutely torching Syracuse right now on the ground. But like I said, going on, you know, later on in the season, if DeVito continues to play inconsistent, I will put Schrader in. All right, not today, but in the future in the season, I will. I promise, okay? Uh, again, it doesn't look like it's going to matter here, though. It, Rutgers is six yards away from putting this thing away. Langan's going to throw here. And he finds Crookshank in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. The Scarlet Knights take a three-possession lead. 45-27 to with under eight minutes to go in the first half, uh, fourth quarter. Excuse me. Put Huff in at quarterback and run a triple option. <laughs> Probably might work out a little bit better at times. I might cost Dino his job. You know what? Honestly, Rutgers is going to be favored in this game. I'm sorry if that's hard for some of you guys to hear. They're going to be favored in this game probably by six points, maybe seven. So if he loses this game, it's not like nobody saw it coming. You know what I mean? <laughs> Peter, I, I love the persistence, brother. All right, if, um, if Syracuse comes up empty on this drive, I'll put Schrader in for the last one. Because at that point, it, it wouldn't matter that much anyway, okay? I got the 46 right. You did. Texan Mark, you did. 48-46. There's still a chance, my brother. There's still a chance. Stay tuned. DeVito throws. You got to go quick here. You got to get first downs. You got to go quick. Javante Williams makes the grab. 11 yards right there. You got to go hurry up. This is where we want to see the orange is the new fast. First down. This is Dino's make or break. You could say that. You could say that. You really could because this game's going to have big recruiting implications and is really where you're going to earn your respect like we talked about earlier. Alford makes the catch, gets up, uh, gets 10 more. Syracuse needs a quick score on this drive. Another pass right here. Pretty good protection, and DeVito finds a receiver, but it looks like Tucker drops it. So third and inches. So it's third down. Just run it here. Pick up your first down. Keep it moving. They're one for nine on third downs today, really because they've overcomplicated the play calling. <laughs> What's up, Bonesy? Play action pass. DeVito throws, and he finds a receiver. It's Alford once again on the wheel route. 25 yards right there. I think the DeVito crowd needs to quiet down just a little bit here. A little bit. Let him do his thing, guys. Come on. He's got him moving. 7 8 to go. You got your three timeouts. You get a touchdown right here. Maybe a two-point conversion. You're just fine. Yeah, Ian, Damian Alford is going to surprise a lot of people. I'm with you there, man. He's like six foot five. He's a big target on the outside. Nice catch along the sideline by Queeley. This has been a great drive by the Orange. Very efficient. Can they cap it off with a touchdown, though? That's the question that needs to be answered. 
Texan Mark says, some Rutgers fan just threw a beer at me. That's funny. That's funny. That is funny, brother. All right, first and 10 from the 15. Four wide out set. Go big or go home here, I think. Motioning, Alford. Another triple. Oh, no, it's a play action pass. DeVito throwing. And he's got a receiver open in the back of the end zone. Courtney Jackson reels it in. We're back in this thing. We're back in this thing. DeVito staying in the ball game. Defense going to get a stop. The Orange back within 13 for now. I think they should go for two here, of course, to make it 11. You never know with Babers and Gilbert, though. I guess we'll find out here. What are we doing? Oh, my gosh. Yo, y'all would go for two here, right? I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not crazy, am I? You would go for two here to make it an 11-point game, wouldn't you? Oh. I don't know about that decision. I don't know about it. We'll see if it pays off in the end. But Texan Mark, hey, two touchdowns and your prediction is spot on, brother. We'll see. This quarterback right now is in a rhythm. That was a big touchdown right there, though. Let's see if the Orange can get a stop. Throw near side. Catch made by Youngblood. I'd be really surprised if the game is this high scoring in real life. I don't know if Syracuse will be able to put up 34. I don't think Rutgers will be able to put up 46. They did get 7 via a scoop and score, but still, that's a lot of points. Here's uh, Aaron Young getting another carry. Rutgers has absolutely gashed Syracuse on the ground. A lot of what we saw last year is spilling over into this season. I'm not sure if that's a byproduct of the 3-3-5 or if the D-line and linebackers are just making wrong decisions. Could be a little of both. Check down pass. Crookshank's got some room. Fights through a tackle. Picks up 11. Come on, fellas. Time for a steal. Yes, indeed. Need, it, need a turnover really bad. I'm not sure that Rutgers is going to put Syracuse in a position to get a turnover, but you need a turnover. Option on first down. That's probably your best chance right there. Nice tackle in the open field by Adrian Cole, I think it was. It's either Cole or Jihad Carter. Either way, second and eight. This is your chance right here. You got to win this down right here. Bring up third and long or get a sack. Four-man rush. I think we got man-to-man -man behind. Great job. Let's go. Mikel Jones right there for the tackle. A loss on that play. Brings up third and nine. This is it right here. This is it right here. You get the stop. You're still in this thing. Let's go. What are you guys dialing up? You going blitz? You playing zone? You playing man-to-man? -man? What are you doing here? Let me know. Four wide out set. Syracuse three down linemen. Two linebackers. Only a three-man rush. Laying and throwing. Near side picked off. Whoa! Let's go, guys. Garrett Williams. The freshman All-American from 2020 gets his first pick of the season. Makes a big play. Syracuse has life, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Texan Mark says blitz. They didn't do it right there, and it paid off. I don't know. Maybe it would have worked, though. Here we go. DeVito, put a drive together. Let's go. Comeback season. Running it on the first play, very questionable decision, but Sean Tucker bounces off a tackle, and he does get out of bounds to stop the clock. That's a hell of an effort. Clock continues to run. I don't really know why he did get out of bounds, but let's go. You got to keep going with the speed. Another run for Tucker. What are we doing? What are we doing? We don't go for two after the last touchdown. And now we're running the football when we just absolutely cooked Rutgers' defense through the air. What, what are we doing, fellas? So now third and nine. Not a good situation. Let's see if they can find a mismatch, though. It's man-to-man -man coverage. DeVito has all day. He throws. That's not there. That's just not there, Tommy. His third pick of the day. Fourth Syracuse turnover. Bones, if you're still here, bud. That is five interceptions already this season. You set the over under at six. I took the over. Money's looking pretty good right now. I'll probably buy a yacht with my winnings. That was terrible, though. You come out with two runs with five minutes left in the game. You're down by 12 points. After you just had a great drive, you know, you exposed them boys passing the ball. And then uh, you just kind of throw up a prayer along the near sideline. It's not even a deep shot. And it's picked off for the third time. That may have been it right there.
Oh, nice tackle. Beautiful tackle. Jihad Carter. Have a day, young sir. Third and inches. Still an opportunity. Sixth tackle of the day. But Syracuse has been really bad today in short yardage situations. We'll see if that can change here. No, it cannot. Aaron Young bursts forward, picks up the first down. And that might be the final nail in the coffin. Can run some more clock. Attack onto their lead. They're going to go Wildcat right here. Oh, they're going to pass. What are you doing? You got to pick this off, guys. Oh, he's going to throw it away. That was just stupid. What are you doing, bro? The play calling for both sides has kind of made no sense. Why would you have your running back throw a pass when you can keep the clock moving? And it, there's danger of throwing a pick there. What are you doing, bro? Run it here. Great job. Great job. You hold them to a field goal. There's still a puncher's chance you can come back. Jones, his seventh tackle today. Fourth TFL. Boy, he has had a great performance. Individually, of course. Third and 11. With a sack, you could push him out of field goal range. Can they get one? They go draw. And Jones gets some pretty good yardage. He gets inside the 30-yard line. Four yards there. Looks like Syracuse is going to hold on to their timeout. But the Scarlet Knights should take a field goal. This one, a 45-yarder. Kickers 4 for 4 today. Should be money for him. They're probably going to run all these 20 seconds off the clock. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. Going to burn some more time. Take their 3. Push this to a 15-point lead, probably. But since you guys are here, be sure to like uh, the video here. I'd appreciate that. Sub to the channel as well. That way you know when I'll be doing these streams. We're going Friday nights and Monday nights. I'll let you know if there's any changes to that. He tacks on the field goal. So a 49-34 lead for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, the next stream will be on Monday night because my buddy Matthew Bonaparte and I, we're both Fizz writers. We're going to be attending ACC Media Day. So I'll be doing the stream the day before we leave on that Monday. And then we'll pick it up back on the Friday next week as well. We'll have coverage of Media Days. Tons of it. More than you guys can even handle. So uh, OrangeFizz.net, at OrangeFizz on Twitter. Those are the places to get all of our content. We're going to have a ton of it from those Media Days in Charlotte. So... All right, 2.48 to go. I'm going to leave DeVito in because this is still anybody's ball game. All right. Five wide set, 2.48, three timeouts. First play is a throw to Jackson underneath, and he makes the catch. You got to go quick. Should be all hurry up from here on out. Yeah, the five for five field goals did kill Syracuse. The guy was automatic, and they were all from like 30 or 40 yards, even more some of those. So, kicker had a nice game. And again, um... I'm not sure it's going to matter, actually. Uh, Jackson makes the catch, breaks the tackle, gets up to the 40. He'll probably, you know, sometimes the field goals are a little bit, it's kind of broken in this game. The kickers can kind of make everything they want. Um, I was thinking maybe real life there'd be an impact, but the game's going to be in the carry dome. There's not really a lot of wind or anything, so it's kind of the perfect spot for a kicker. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Olford is gone! I can't even finish my point. Olford, 59 yards on the receiving end of DeVito's pass. Syracuse back within nine points with an extra point, back within eight. Oh, my goodness. That is huge, guys. Don't go anywhere. Do not go anywhere. Stay right here. But why are we going for two, though? Why are we going for two here? Crap, you better get this. You better get this. Oh my gosh. Bro, Sherrod Jones is garbage. Wide open in the back of the end zone. DeVito puts it right on his face mask. Oh, and then we get the... Oh, I can't even keep up. I can't even keep up right now. Oh my goodness, bro. Alright, that was a dumb decision. He should have caught that ball. We get the onside recovery, though. We still have a chance. This is a crazy game. Oh my gosh. The game's kind of... All right, there we go. The defense through the air with a great passing attack on their last drive. So much of the passing game is about the time between the quarterback and his wide receivers. Right now with this offense, they are in... All right, that's it right there. I was about to tweet, try to get more people in here to watch the finish, but right on cue, Tommy DeVito throws away the game with his fourth pick of the day. Might, might be some con uh, quarterback controversy, guys, going forward. I think you all have a great point about uh, all of that. That was, that was a crazy sequence, though.
You get the onside kick, and then the next play, you throw a pick. <laughs> I could, I can't. I'm breaking a sweat over here. I can't even keep up with what is going on. You told me to bring in Schrader. You did tell me to bring in Schrader, but Devito, come on. You, I mean, the, the, those two drives, aside from the interceptions, were unbelievable. Those throws he was making. So there was a reason to leave him in the game. That pick right there was bad. Was was terrible. So. Like I said, he's going to have a really short leash next week against U Albany and an even shorter leash when Syracuse plays Liberty. Schrader is going to be in the waiting wings to hit the field. But third and three, SU uses up all their timeouts. Can they get maybe one more stop? No, they can't. Crookshank makes the catch off the sideline, 18 yards. And that should just about do it. There's a player hurt. It doesn't look to be that disappointing, bad. man. Really disappointing. You played. You didn't really play that well, but you still had a chance to win. I don't know why they went for two there. It didn't really matter because they ended up getting the onside kick right after that. But then Devito throws the interception. Of course, you know they still had it. Oh, and that's just gonna you know make matters worse. Aaron Young scores the game ceiling touchdown with a minute 15 to go. This has just been an absolute barn burner. 55 to 40. Woo. And, the quarterback stays on the field. and they're going to go for two to rub it in. Oh my gosh. Greg Schiano is taking no prisoners, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and they still get it. None was right there to make the play. Schiano goes for two just for, just for uh, craps and gigs and gets it. I'll put Schrader in for you guys. Looks like they're going to review this catch, though. Shiana move there, yeah. I'll put Schrader in for this last minute 15 for y'all. Yeah, that's a catch. Sixty-five pancakes, you do a great job with this. Thanks. Hey, thank you, thank you. It's always fun to have you guys in here. I appreciate all the support y'all give me. Uh, this is really fun stuff. I'm glad that I can do this for you guys. We can all get excited about the season together. I'll put Schrader in for y'all. Hopefully, uh, you know, Syracuse can do better in the next one against Albany. but let's see if Schrader can uh, make some things happen here. Maybe if he has a nice drive, he'll get the start next week. Who knows? It's kind of funny. To be, uh, <laughs> Baber's probably watching this right now, and um, <laughs> he's like, these guys, you guys think uh, DeVito's starting and everything like that. He doesn't know anything, you know what I mean? That'd be funny if he was doing that. Taken from the three-yard line. Texan Mark says, yeah, great job at hiring you. Thank you, brother. I really do appreciate that. This is uh, well, this is what I spend most of my free time doing anyway. So I'm glad I can, you know, broadcast it for you guys to enjoy. I'll uh, put Schrader in. Here you go. The, 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 <laughs> the put Schrader in crowd will be happy with this decision. And we'll play one play with him, too. Let me take myself out first, and then we'll play a play with him. Word, my heart hurts, my, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It looked like Syracuse had a great chance in this one for a little while. But uh, too many turnovers, too many bad mistakes. Kind of what we've come to expect, you know what I mean? Lampson going to be the rear starter? I, dude, honestly, like, this dude is the next uh, Eric Dungy, in my opinion. So I could really see him definitely getting, uh, getting a role somehow. All right, let's get Schrader going. One play, we're going to go read option unless they blitz. I don't think they are, so we're fine. Let's do it. One general rule in any game is to hold on to the ball. If you're in the negative in the turnover department, you're keep form. Ooh! Look at that. Garrett Schrader, first play, 21-yard carry. There you go, fellas. All right, now let's see what he can do as the CPU. I mean, obviously, I can make anybody look good when I'm playing, not to be cocky or anything. But <laughs> All right, minute and four. Have a drive. Overthrow right there. He was wide open. Okay. You make it feel like we really, lo really lost this game. Well, you know, yeah, we did. We did. Handoff for Tucker. Counter left side. Pretty good gain. What's Tucker done today yardage-wise? 61 yards. 18 carries is enough. 61 yards, not really enough, but... It's going to be a tough Rutgers defense, so I expect him to have to fight for every yard as Schrader gets sacked. 
Nearly a forced fumble right there as the blitz gets home. Looks like Tucker got beat in pass protection. Should go for it here. Yep, they will. Love it. Maybe Schrader can move the chains. Nerves, LOL. Well, yeah, could be. Could be. Schrader going up top. He's forcing that in there. Intended for Alford. And it's knocked down by Avery Young. And that is just about going to do it from the carrier dome. The Orange going to drop the home opener, the dome opener, 57-40 to to the Scarlet Knights. Let me know how you guys felt about that one. What your record predictions are going forward. Maybe some early U Albany predictions. Couple knees from Langen should do it. Before you go, be sure to drop a like on the vid, sub to the channel. I'd appreciate that. And check out our content at orangefizz.net and at orangefizz on Twitter. We'll see who the player of the game is here. There it is, though. The final buzzer. Rutgers 57, Syracuse 40. The Scarlet Knights come to the Carrier Dome and get a big non-conference win. Aaron Young, your player of the game. 14 carries, 90 yards. And three touchdowns. Let me know who your Syracuse player of the game was, who you thought played well, who you thought played bad. We can have a discussion about that. We'll look at the game stats as well. Tweet out the final score here. All right, really tough loss. Let's take a look at the final stats here. So we'll start with the scoring summary. Uh, let's see. Oh, my gosh, man. 23 points Rutgers scored in that second quarter. That was a, I, I forgot that even happened. I believe we have to bury these guys in the real game. Yeah, we do, Michael, for sure, dude. I think, uh, I think we have the possibility to. Virtually couldn't get it done. And then they had 18 in the fourth quarter as well. Syracuse was outscored 28-16 to in the second and 29-24 in the first. So, yeah, really high-scoring affair. Probably high, more high-scoring than the experts would have thought. The over-under in this game probably is around 50, I would say. Definitely not, uh, what, 97? <laughs> All right, final stats for DeVito. Put myself at the bottom of the screen here for you guys. See his numbers there. So... Uh, 24 for 35 for 354 yards. That's the good. Three touchdowns. That's the good. The bad. Four picks. And he was sacked four times on the ground. DeVito was our leading rusher. 12, 12 carries for 72 yards. Not sack adjusted. Probably around 100, honestly. Long of 45. Had a touchdown there. Sean Tucker, 18 for 61. Only averaging three per carry. Got to be better next week. He did have a touchdown, though. Garrett Schrader, that one carry for 21 yards. We did that. <laughs> Uh, Abdul Adams had 3 for 18. Cooper Lutz had 1 for 11. And in the receiving side of things, wow. Alford had an absolutely ginormous game. The best of his career for sure. 7 for 151 and a touchdown. Queeley, 4 for 92. Uh, Courtney Jackson, 6 for 51 and a touchdown. Javante Williams, 3 for 21 and a touchdown. The true freshman Gats then had 1 for 19. Harris, only 1 for 14. One of Syracuse's better players had like no targets and like zero production as well. That's got to change. It is the old dome ceiling, Michael. I'm sure the new game will have the new one. Um, <laughs> I mean, probably would have been really difficult to redesign that ceiling in this version of the game. But still, it looks nice. Got to love the carry dome. On the offensive line, Service gave up two sacks. Did have two pancakes, though. Uh, and Tisdale gave up a sack. Defensively, Michael Jones, our leader with 10 tackles. Cole came in second with nine. Uh, as well as Thompson with nine. Jason Simmons had eight tackles as well. 
In terms of TFLs, uh, do we have any sacks today? All right, we had two. Kingsley Jonathan had both of our sacks. But in terms of TFLs, quite a few of those. Curtis Harper had one. Chase Atkinson had one. Jihad Carter had one. McKinley Williams had one. Jonathan, two. Thompson, two. Jason Simmons Jr. had two. And Michael Jones had four. Interceptions-wise, Deuce Chestnut had one. Neil Nunn had one. And Garrett Williams had one. So each of the cornerbacks there love to see it. Deflections, Williams had one, and Jihad Carter had one as well. No forced fumbles this week or anything like that. Schmidt, two for two on field goals, long of 51. He played well. Uh, Abdul Adams had five punts for 147 freaking yards. Uh, pretty impressive, actually. Uh, and Schmidt had one for four, uh, 46. We'll be sure to have the right punter in there next week. Uh, kick return, Harris, five for 154. And then two for 21 in terms of punt returns. Um, team stats last. No, I want to find that Deuce Chestnut interception that we didn't get to watch. You like the fire of the D? Me too. Me too. I, I like the defense just really in general. Um, Syracuse offensively was competitive in this. I mean, you look at the first down numbers, the total yardage was very similar. Um, pretty somewhat balanced performance. Not completely, but you know, the big difference in the game, I would say was third downs. The orange were two for 12. Rutgers was eight for 19. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take myself off the screen here for a sec. Um, in terms of the red zone, similar there. The big difference as well, and, you know, you had the you had the third downs. You also had turnovers, though. Syracuse 5 to Rutgers is 3. Cannot be turning the ball over like that going forward. And that kind of falls on DeVito's shoulders. Let's go see if we can find that um, Deuce Chestnut pick for you guys. I think it was in the second or third. Find out real quick. I think it was late in the second. Here we go, right here. No replay. Oh. Really? Darn. All right, no replay for that one. Probably because we didn't uh, sim it or whatever. But I'm sure it was a nice play by Chestnut there. But that's going to end the stream, fellas. Thank you once again. So much for tuning in tonight. Be sure to like this video if you did like the content. I'll be doing another stream on Monday night. Sub to the channel as well. I'd appreciate that. Uh, of course, a lot of work does go into this behind the scenes, but I do love to do it. Uh, again, this is my personal YouTube channel. I'm a representative for Orange Fizz. You can check out our content at orangefizz.net and at orangefizz on Twitter. And like I said before, we'll be doing another stream on Monday night, it'll be Syracuse at home once again against UAlbany, an in-state foe. I think it's the Interstate 90 rivalry, technically. That one will be fun. That'll be back right here on the channel, of course, and I'll be promoting that over the weekend. So thanks so much once again for watching.